So today I want to talk about alcohol. So alcohol is something that people always ask me about. And uh, just first and foremost, every single one of my clients that I have drinks and we figure out a way to mindfully work it in to our weeks and try to be strategic with it if we can. Um, I don't think I have a single person that I work with that has given up drinking completely uh, 100%, but I do have people that will take months off. So right now I've got a couple of clients, in-person clients who do dry January and they've done it now for a few years and they always like it because they, they just, it's, it sets them up for the year. They drop a little bit of water. They feel a little bit more clear, uh, clear, a little bit more clarity and uh, they just enjoy doing it and they, they don't mind taking a month off. So taking four to five weeks off and sometimes they extend it to February. I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm just saying that if fat loss is the goal and we want to see that needle move on the traditional weight scale, if, you, if you're drinking uh, alcohol throughout the week and then you give it up, you're going to lose weight. That's just the natural byproduct of uh, giving up drinking for any length of time usually uh, for at least a week. But um, it's going to be mainly water weight because alcohol tends to uh, add water retention. And I also, I don't want it to be all doom and gloom. I want to try to give you guys some, some tangible, uh, tactical options here. So I always tell people they have a couple options with, with alcohol during a calorie deficit. If they're trying to lean down, they're going through a lean phase and they're trying to achieve that, that calorie deficit. And I was telling a couple of guys this over the week. So you have a couple options. Number one, you can pick one day out of the week to have two to three drinks. And so when I say drinks, I mean low calorie beer uh, or low calorie cocktail. So a low calorie cocktail would be something like a shot of vodka and maybe some diet tonic water or some diet Sprite. That would be the, your lowest calorie cocktail mixed drink. And then there's a lot of beers that are under 100 calories. I'd shoot for those. Um, if you're in a calorie deficit, or if you're shooting to get, be in a calorie deficit, it doesn't make sense to slam Budweiser every night. I wish uh, it were the case. I wish Budweiser were zero calorie because then I'd still drink it. But uh, I don't anymore. And I actually really liked traditional regular Budweiser. So I would pick something like Bud Select, uh, Michelob Ultra. There's even some craft beers that are under 100 calories now. If you're from KC, Boulevard has Easy Sport, which is a great low calorie beer. So the first option was pick one day, two to three drinks, and that's part of your treat. Okay, so you can treat it like your treat standalone, or you can have like, I don't know, like a traditional treat with a couple drinks, like half a brownie and then a couple drinks. That, that could be your treat for the week or something. And you can look forward to that on Saturday night or Sunday. The other thing, or the other option is you can spread those drinks out. So like, let's say uh, Wednesdays are traditionally a really busy day for you or Thursdays are a really busy day for you and you wanna have a drink when you get home. Okay, have a drink. And then if you wanna have another one, you can have one on Thursday and then spread it out and have one on Saturday or Sunday. I would try to spread them out if you can because then you won't have the negative effects of the alcohol. Uh, so you could split it up. You could do like low calorie beer on Wednesday or Thursday night, and then you could have a glass of wine with dinner on Sunday. That's a good example. The other thing that you could do, um, let's see, those are the two options that seem to, to work best for most of my clients. The other thing you can do is the thing I mentioned earlier is you can just take a limited amount of time off from it, see how you feel, run an experiment. You know, if it's not something that is uh, seems too dire to cut out for three to five weeks and then try it out, see how it goes. Look, look at the scale to go down. That might be, uh, a motivator. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be, and you don't necessarily have to give up alcohol. It's kind of like, you don't have to give up sugar to lose body fat. You don't, I eat sugar every single day. There's sugar and protein bars. So sugar isn't the enemy. It's ex excess calories is what's going to ultimately make me gain weight over time. So we can factor it in, we can even track it. Now, the other thing to remember is alcohol is separate from the three macronutrients. So the three macronutrients are protein, fats, and carbs. Alcohol is its own macronutrient, okay? So for every one gram of alcohol, whatever alcohol it is, uh, and I'm just talking alcohol, I'm not talking alcoholic beverages, I'm talking alcohol by itself. One gram is seven calories. So it's high in calories. The other downside to alcohol is it can dehydrate you, it can lower inhibitions, which makes people eat more considerably afterwards for most people, not everybody. 
Um, so we have to take that into consideration. If people are in, trying to be in a calorie deficit for a long period of time, drinking a lot is not a good idea. It just doesn't make sense. You may as well just not attempt to be in a, a calorie deficit if, you, if you're really wanting to drink a lot. Um, and by a lot, I mean like several drinks, several nights per week. That's just, it's not gonna work. Uh, the other unfortunate portion of alcohol as a standalone macronutrient is your body views it as a, as a toxin so not to get all woo-woo because I don't think we, we need to talk about like expelling toxins or anything, but we have to recognize that uh, alcohol is what it is, okay? It can serve a purpose, but it doesn't, re it doesn't really serve a purpose as far as like uh, gaining lean tissue. It actually can slow down protein synthesis. So when we lift, we break down our muscle fibers and then protein synthesis occurs and our, our tissue repairs itself, okay, when we're resting and when we're sleeping. Alcohol, if you, so let's say you, you get a good workout in on a Saturday and then you drink all night. Well, it's, it's going to basically make that workout null and void because it's going to stop all of the necessary biological processes that are, are going to help you sustain and acquire new lean tissue and new muscle cells because your body just works to get rid of it. That's the first thing your body does. So if I go, if I work out all day and then I go drink, you know, half a pint of vodka or something, I may as well not have worked out because my body is going to spend the next 72, 48 to 72 hours. They've studied this 48 to 72 hours, just getting rid of the alcohol, just expelling it from my, my system. And it's going to stop that protein synthesis, that repair, that recovery that would be necessary to acquire and sustain that lean tissue. Okay. So it's not all doom and gloom. Again, all of my clients drink. So let's just keep that in mind. We can lose body fat and have alcohol in our week, but we have to be very, very mindful and very, very strategic about it, okay? So uh, if you have any more questions about alcohol or uh, you just wanna talk about like maybe ways we can we can try to strategize, uh, I think, you know, hypothetically, you could probably, probably could do like maybe three whiskeys if you just had like a small thing of whiskey and ice. Uh, you could spread that out, out over the course of the week. Um, but again, those are calories. So if you're adding an extra hundred calories to your day, that just means that's a hundred calories that you don't get in food. So we just try to mitigate that as much as possible and move forward and be strategic and be smart about it. Okay. And again, if you guys have questions, you know where to find me. Bye.